In this video, I'm going to discuss Michaela's mental kinetics and derive the quasi-steady state assumption. So first of all, we need to know that we have an enzyme E and a substrate, and the enzyme plus the substrate gives you the enzyme substrate complex. This is a reversible reaction, so that's why we have a forward reaction K1 and a backwards reaction K-1. Now then, from that complex, you get the formation of the product, uh, plus you get the enzyme again, because the enzyme is purely a catalyst in this reaction, so it's not consumed at all, and you will see later on why this is important. So we're going to make an important assumption here, and that the, this is a reaction that's irreversible, and you only get the product formation, so only K2. So that gives you then for the product formation dp dt over time, so the V is K2 times the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. And then we know by law of conservation, since it's that the enzyme is not used up in the reaction, it's purely a catalyst, um, that E itself plus the enzyme in the substrate complex gives you a total amount of enzyme, and that will always remain the same. And you will see in this reaction, it will be very important to find an expression for your enzyme substrate complex, as that will depend, um, as you will just have a, a look back at this uh, reaction where you see the product formation, you will see ES is mentioned in there. So we'll need to find a different expression for ES. Now we also know that the maximum velocity is equal to K2 times the total amount of enzyme. So just bear that in mind and we're going to use this later on. But for now, let's just make a start on how we can actually derive another equation for the enzyme substrate complex. And in this case, we're going to look at one particular scenario. So this is the quasi steady state assumption. So let's just have a, a, a look at, um, let's just have a look at Michaelis Menten kinetics in general, and then I'll come back to this quasi steady state assumption. So here I'm plotting the substrate concentration over the reaction rate, and you will see that it has this exponential curve type of fit. Now, and first of all, we need to know what the Michaelis Menten constant is. So this is Km and why this is so important. And you will see this is like the substrate concentration where we are at 50% of the reaction rate, roughly. So you will see this graph starts off linear. So you will have a low substrate concentration. You will uh, have first order kinetics. So your reaction rate does depend on the substrate. If we are further along the curve, uh, so the substrate concentration becomes higher than Km, we're looking at zero order kinetics, where this is no longer dependent on the substrate concentration. And this is equal to where you have inhibition. For instance, if you've got too much of the product, then it doesn't matter uh, so much anymore. Uh, some inhibition will occur and automatically your reaction is slowed down. Now here we come to the really important bit, and this is actually a quasi steady state assumption. So here we assume, and uh, here we look at K1 times E times S, so that's the reaction you have at the beginning. So that should be equal to the K minus one uh, from the enzyme substrate complex. So the backwards reaction is equal to K2 times ES. So there's no accumulation there. Then we need to apply that we know that the, the enzyme concentration in the reaction will always remain the same. So I'm going to substitute uh, E in this equation for E0, so that's the total amount of enzyme, minus uh, the enzyme substrate complex. And this is what you end up with. that we had, so I'm bringing this between brackets, so you get something like K1E0 times the substrate minus K1ES times S, and what's on the other side remains the same. And then I'll have a look at, as you can see, ES is mentioned uh, in three of the sums here, so I'll bring the, the bit where you have minus K1 times ES times S to the other side, so you will see everything on the right hand side will depend on ES one way or the other. 
and then on the other side we have k1 e0 times the substrate concentration. Now and if we, we bring all of that over to the other side we can get an expression for the enzyme substrate complex and uh, so that will be equal to k1 times e0 times the substrate concentration divided over k minus 1 plus k2 plus k1 times the substrate concentration. And here we actually have the bit where we're going to substitute in this Km. So Km was this Michaelis mental constant that you will have seen in the graph. And you need to know that this is K minus 1 plus K2 divided over K1. So what I'm doing here is I'm expressing everything in terms of k1 um, and you will see that k minus 1 and k2 are both divided over k1 so we can do uh, instead we can write it as k minus 1 plus k2 divided over k1 plus s so that's exactly the same and you will see this is where this Michaelis momentum constant comes in uh, because you will get km plus s and what we'll do then is you can see you have k, k1 there and also k1 there, so you just divide over k1 and that will disappear. And now I'm going to substitute in, uh, say, Es is E0 times the substrate concentration divided over km, so we need to know that definition, plus s. So now we have an expression for ES. Remember, we have to go back to the equation where we say that dp dt is equal to k2 times ES. And we also need to remember that the Vmax was equal to k2 times E0. Now I'm going to substitute in uh, the, the formula for ES, which is E0 times S divided over Km plus S, and then we'll see because we have K2 times E0 in there, which is equal to Vmax, we end up with the equation dp dt is Vmax times the substrate concentration divided over Km plus your substrate. And this is how you derive Michaelis Menson quasi-steady state uh, approximations. You see this is very important in enzyme kinetics, and you can apply this to know what the rate of your reaction is. So looking at the graph. And there's also different ways of how you can determine Km, but I'll talk about this in another time. So hopefully you will have understand a little bit more about enzyme kinetics now and are able to follow this derivation. Please do have a look at our Bio-inspired materials playlist if you want to know more about things such as enzyme kinetics or how enzymes can be used in sensors. Thanks for watching.